Good morning, good morning, good morning, Neo Investors. Making this video about Neo stock, 11 reasons Neo stock price is low. Making this, recording this video, 26 November 2024. It's coming up to 19 minutes past 8 a.m. UK time, guys, and it's fallen. It's fallen again, guys. Neo stock has fallen. That's the news. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be talking about 11 reasons Neo stock price is low, and not just today, low today, but overall, guys. Anyway, let's just look at the stock first. The um, pre market, well, after hours trading from yesterday, you know, from the 25th, and then after hours trading going into pre market, you can see the stock has more or less collapsed from that high range of 480, where it was over 480. So, but roughly that range of 480 now, it's. Um, bottomed out at $4.60, $4.60. And we're going to get into the reasons in a minute. Just looking at the price action. So it's not really rising at the moment. It's not really rising high. Like it reached $4.95 going back yeah, on the 25th yesterday. So that's the situation currently. Just want to go over these reasons, these 11 reasons why overall the stock's low. I'm going to just talk about them. Um, no particular order. No particular order. I'm going to go over these um, reasons and try to mitigate each one. Try to reason... You know, try to understand the reasons, each reason, try to mitigate, give a, a different, you know, give a positive argument for it being not so negative. Let's start with deliveries. Well, we know about the deliveries. Um, Neo did fail to deliver vehicles, obviously. They couldn't meet demand when there was uh when there was offers. You know when there was offers from the um basically to trade in to get rid of their fuel, you know, petrol, diesel, gas cars to get electric. Ne uh, Neo wasn't able to meet that demand at that particular time. So it doesn't mean that that's always gonna happen in the future. It was just a rush rush and they couldn't do that. But obviously that affected the share price of NEO. So we can like cross out that one, you know, hopefully it don't happen again. If NEO can meet demand, you know, get in front with production. But obviously like there was a rush to try and meet demand, which they couldn't do. So I think we can safely assume that that's going to be sorted out, you know, moving forward. So that we don't have to worry about that. Um, competition. Competition is um, it's, it's different ways of looking at it. I mean, obviously, like, Neo's not the only EV maker, and there are larger EV makers in China, and even, obviously, Tesla, you know, is an American company in China. So there's other manufacturers in China, not just Chinese manufacturers, but competition is obviously, you know, it's like there's a lot of competition, but at the same time, Neo is a luxury brand and it's got high tech, you know, with its AI, you know, AI nano chips and everything. So in that respect, it's, it, it sets itself apart, you know, from the competition. 
it sets itself apart from the competition. So in that respect, it should be okay, you know, um, moving forward. It should, should be okay um, because of the quality, the quality in the tech, basically. That's the day chart we're looking at now. So I think competition, you know, it's not really an issue for Neo. Neo probably looks forward to the competition as it increases the sales and, you know, as it advances the company. Um, we can go to point, num that was point number two. No particular order. We can go to point number three. Um, let's say about the battery swapping, right? So, at the moment, obviously, until they get, until Neo, you know, make, manufacture a lot of cars or sell those cars, they're not really going to get the battery swapping network profitable. Um, so obviously they need to expand, they need to expand, they need to get more battery swapping stations ready to meet the demand that's coming out, you know, coming on the road. So I think in, in the future, obviously those battery swapping stations will become profitable. So I don't see there being an issue in the long term, in the long term, you know, that should be you know, dealt with um, by the numbers of vehicles that NEO can sell, they should be able to generate profits. Um, let's go to next point is basically price, the cost, you know, the um, costs are coming down, obviously it's competition and costs are coming down each, each EV maker wants to be the cheapest but it doesn't always work like for instance in the eu they're talking about now you know to bring down tariffs they're talking about raising the prices of chinese evs in europe and probably going to talk talk about that in the, in the us as well but in china i don't know that's probably different there's a comp like they want to bring down prices in China. That's the comp but that that's all based on competition as well. Obviously, as I said, Neo because of the quality and the tech, they're not necessarily the cheapest. Even though they are producing a cheaper brand, um, cheaper model, the Firefly, they're not necessarily the cheapest. It's all about quality, not really you know always the cheapest. So I think. When you talk about Neo as a company, I don't think it really matters too much about price because people obviously they'll pay a bit more for, you know, for for quality. It's just the same as people pay more for, for for Tesla cars, you know, because of the Tesla quality. Um, another point is often made that there's a slowdown, you know which is a, it's a red herring, really. It's a um, geopolitical, mainstream, kind of like China bashing. That there's a slowdown in, you know, demand in China. But as I said, like, that's, um, it's just China bashing, really. I don't think there is a slowdown. I think there's a big demand, a huge demand. And the demand is growing, you know. With, because of Chinese policies on um, increasing the number of EVs. So I don't think that's an issue. I think, as I said, it's a red herring. It's not, you know, there's no, there's no slowdown. We, the numbers are increasing. And that goes on to my other point about basically the economy. Again, you've got mainstream geopolitical media bashing China, saying, you know, the, the economy's slowing down. But if it's slowing down, why are they building more power stations and nuclear power stations and coal stations 
and building and building and building. And the population is growing as well. So it can't be a slowdown. If they, they need to meet demand. So it's, as I say, like that's, that's not an issue. It's not an issue. So I don't know why it would put people off of investing in NEO, especially NEO uh, expanding outside of China as well. So I can't see that being a factor that would put people off of investing. Obviously, like, if people selling NEO stock, then the price of NEO stock, you know, if more people sell NEO stock, the price of NEO stock goes down for one or more of all these reasons that I'm giving, you know. Um, then we're going to talk about Europe, as I mentioned Europe already, but Obviously, NEO are expanding in Europe and, um, you know, the tariffs are quite high in Europe. But they're talking about, as I said, like bringing, you know, to, you know, increasing the prices, right, of, you know, Chinese manufacturers, Chinese EV manufacturers. So that's undecided yet. I think when the news breaks, if it, if it's, you know, if it goes Neo's way, not just Neo, like obviously other Chinese EV manufacturers, but specifically, like if it if it's good news for Neo, I think you're gonna see, you know, if a deal's reached and it and it's good for Neo, you're gonna see in Neo stock price shoot up. So I think they've got to reach a deal soon, sooner or later. They can't long it out, so there should be a deal soon. We should see Neo price go up. Obviously, it was bashed down because of that. And obviously, like Europe, they're following the US in that respect. Um, and getting onto the US, obviously, you've got that geopolitical, you know, trade, um, trade tensions, you know, between the US and China. But I spoke a lot about this in my um, some of my previous videos, and I don't see I don't see that continuing for like a long long term. That's got to be sorted out because ultimately it's going to hurt. It will hurt America. It will hurt the US. And I've spoken about that in my previous videos. The way it can hurt the US and hurt and hurt Tesla. And just like, not just Tesla, but other companies. But if you talk about EV companies, it can hurt Tesla. It can hurt Tesla in China. I've said this in, in some other videos that Chinese government, they only need to put the word out that Chinese people should buy, you know, Chinese EVs. And that's it. Game over for, for Tesla, at least in China. But it's going to, it would severely affect uh, Tesla's share price, you know moving forward if that was to happen i mean if the if they kept up the pressure about you know the trade the trade tensions you know the trade war as they call it between the us and china if china uh, if us kept up that pressure it's ultimately going to affect in so many other ways as well it's going to affect the us so i can't see that continuing so you can you can you can um tick off that point you know but obviously that's got to play out. It's got to pan out. So uh, none, none of this is financial advice. You know, you shouldn't make financial decisions based on what I'm saying. But I'm just going over some points and trying to mitigate some of the bad points that would put people off investing in NEO. Um, expenses, we're going to another point like expenses increasing you know cost increasing um obviously like as neo expands it's going bound to you know spend more but i think that that spending will slow down as they as, as they gradually expand you know expand out on a gradual basis rather than like surge like at some points there's got bound to be surges right as they expand but as the years go on i think moving into especially moving towards the end of 2026 which is like two years away i think that spending would have slowed down as they they sold a lot more cars and continue to get reeled 
reorders, etc. But you know, as a startup, I mean, although they've been around now, you know, for Neo's like 10 years old, but obviously like some points, they're gonna spend a lot more. So I think that spending will slow down, not to say production will slow down, but set, obviously uh, that higher spending is relate, relate, related to setting up costs, especially especially the um, stations, you know, the battery swapping stations. But once the battery swapping stations are in place, then that, they're going to save a fortune moving forward, you know, and, and, and earning money from those battery swapping stations as i said with all the vehicles that they will be selling using those battery swapping stations um so then we come on to an issue about obviously more shares have been added you know um since neo was ipo'd you know obviously more shares have been added something like you know i don't know exact i think double like but that happens with a lot of companies that doesn't mean it, it may happen again in the future but it's, it gets more highly unlikely as time goes on as they deliver you know build more and especially once they establish once they get those battery swapping stations set up then that, as I said, it goes back to spending. The spending slows down, like the higher spending. And then obviously more profits come in and lower debts. So I can't see that really being an issue moving forward. I mean, it's probably going to be, it's probably not going to affect, in my opinion, not going to affect the um, share price, you know, overall. Um, as I say, it's all about profits, right? And Neo are not just into, you know, just selling cars. Don't forget, you know, they've got the battery swapping, which should earn their money, right? Should uh, bring revenue in. And also the tech, you know, the AI tech, right? Um, the chips. So you've got to factor in all, all the ways Neo can earn money, not just like focus on sales of evs so in that respect then moving forward if they make you know generate a lot of profit then share price should react uh, in a good way um and they are more or less i've covered all the reasons the 11 points and just the last one about china stimulus measures you know um Obviously, they're going to fluctuate over time, but I think Neo will overcome, like, in my opinion, you know, regardless, regardless. And they've got the backing anyway of the Chinese uh, Chinese government and investors. And that, I think that will play out in a good way, you know, as, 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 as time goes on into 2025 and 2026. So they're all the reasons why people, like most of the reasons anyway, why, what, why people would be put off from investing in Neo, and um, and that's probably why you know why the price of Neo stock is low at the moment because really it should be ten or ten to fifteen dollars if those issues wasn't present or or not that like not that bad you know not not so severe and, and so many issues if there weren't so many issues or you know maybe not too bad all at once whatever then i think the share price you could safely say it would sort of be around about eight nine to maybe fifteen dollars you know um so they that's the way I see it at the moment, guys, with um, uh, Neo stock. It doesn't put me off from investing these issues. As I said, I can mitigate every issue and I can see it. I can see it long term, you know, 
coming good or improving situations on each point. So obviously everyone's got to make up their own mind, right? You might disagree, but like it doesn't put me off from investing. Um, and obviously like if the price drops, if Neo's stock price drops lower, then it's just another buying opportunity, really. That's the way I see it. And then obviously, like when it peaks up, as it did when it went 770, that's when people get all excited, etc. And they say, oh, why didn't I buy, you know, when it was down here? Like, you know, when it was 375 or whatever, why didn't I buy, blah, 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 and all that. But I think once it breaks out the range, you know, once it starts pushing up and up and up, and it's possible it could go to the moon again like it did back in 2020, 2021. I think then it's too late to just change, just reset the chart. It's too late to get back in then, you know, once it makes a move as it did here in 2020. You can see basically 2020, 2021 went to the moon. So that's up to people. This is a one month chart. It's up to people to decide to just to decide what they want to do with Neo stock. But all these reasons, these eleven reasons, I've just gone over um, eleven points. Um, these really are why the Neo stock price is low. These eleven points, because if they wasn't, aside from these eleven reasons, you know. Neo really should be kind of like gradually, stock price should be gradually climbing. If it was an, an, like an ordinary, if, if all, all these points weren't issues, except for like obviously like spending, you're going to, certain ish, certain points, they're going to be like certain reasons, they're going to exist, right? But if, if the other reasons didn't exist, like the trade war, you know, and the, and the EU, the tariffs and, and issues that don't need to exist. If they didn't exist, I think we, we would see Neo price now, like 20, 25, maybe $30 and moving up all the time. So we have to, you know, basically decide for ourselves what, what we're going to do. Are we buying for a swing trade? Are we buying to hold long term? Or what? It's up to investors, like it's up to traders and investors in Neo stock, what they want to do. But that's that's my take on it, guys. Like that's my take on it at the moment. Obviously, I've got my um, target price for buying more, buying more Neo stock if the price drops, and I'm just waiting, and um, I'm waiting and not hesitating, guys. If 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 I get a good price, I'll buy more. And that's me, like I'm not giving financial advice. You do what you want to do.